Hello, I'm showing you a case of a completion cholecystectomy, which is a patient who about five years ago underwent a subtotal cholecystectomy for severe acute cholecystitis. There's a little stone. Uh, again, that was five years ago. Um, she did well from that operation, was followed with ultrasounds actually to see if any new stones um, developed in the remnant gallbladder. And after a few years, there were none. So, so ultrasounds um, stopped at that time. Um, but recently, uh, the individual had another attack of cholecystitis, um, got better on antibiotics, came to see me in consultation, um, and I offered a completion cholecystectomy. These are not my favorite cases, but I felt um, able to help, and I have some excellent partners who were available this day and actually come into the operating room to look at what I'm looking at. Um, to help with decision making and uh, scrubbing in if necessary. So just um, highlighting some of the important points for difficult cases, if not all cases, but work from known to unknown, work where easy. Um, and you'll see me do that a lot in this case. Um, there's really no rhyme or reason to the flow of how I move things around. Um, and it's all just because I'm trying to go from known to un known to unknown and working where easy. Um, I was having trouble retracting the liver, so I'm going to take down these adhesions. It's going to help me retract the liver a little bit better. And I left this largely unedited um, because I don't claim to be an expert at this type of procedure. And for those of you who do this a lot more frequently than me, if I leave it unedited, it gives you the opportunity to fully evaluate me and give me some pointers for the next case, although I don't think I'm necessarily looking for this as the next case. So right now, I'm just trying to identify um, the gallbladder itself, and I'm taking down some residual mental adhesions, and I can see that the duodenum is drawn up uh, onto where I presume the gallbladder is as well. I don't know if that's what was seen at the first operation, and that's why a subtotal was performed, um, or if that's something that's developed after the fact. Continuing to take down some adhesions so that I get uh, full retraction She had a CAT scan, an MRCP, and a ultrasound uh, pre-surgical. There was no comment on a fistula to the bowel. Um, so I'm not certain if that's what I'm seeing here or if it's simply uh, really plastered. But I'm trying to take down all other adhesions that I can except for the area that's adherent. Um, See if I can get it to come to a point. And here I'm just trying to get around the side. For cases uh, that I have done with the fistula to the duodenum, I'll make a window behind uh, the duodenum and then come in arm four with a stapler. But I saw some more easy work to do, so I moved over here for a little bit. Now back to the area of interest. And I'm kind of just deciding at this point that whether there's a fistula there or not, I think that I'm just going to have to bite the bullet and try to get this down. But right there, I just did some um, dissecting, and I feel like I might have found a plane between the duodenum and the gallbladder. So I'm going to go and work on that a little bit more now. You'll see it more clearly in just a moment.
So this is looking like a plane that's between the gallbladder and the liver. I was very timid uh, at this point until I see what you're about to see here. That's the plane between the small bowel and the gallbladder. And um, this is where I was hoping if I could make a window behind it, um, I could just get a stapler in. So that's what I'm gonna work on doing right here. Right here, I'm uh, developing a plane between the duodenum and the gallbladder stump. And I, I feel like I'm almost all the way through there now. I'm trying to demonstrate it with my suction. And there, I see it. So at first I was thinking of putting a stapler across it. Um, and then I just decided to just take it off um, and then I'll, I'll primarily repair it later. Again, not a glamorous operation, and I left it largely unedited because I want those who do this a lot more frequently than me to get a chance to see what I'm doing and give me some tips in case I ever do this case again. And just struggling a little bit getting the liver out of my way, but we'll go ahead and come across the rest of the adherence, fistula, whatever you want to call it. There. And that's the defect. Which did look like there was a opening, but no bile coming out or anything. And now I'm going to work on uh, the remnant cholecystectomy. And at this point right here, I can clearly see the remnant stump of the gallbladder. You could tell that the duodenum was uh, adherent to the top of the open portion or what was left of the open portion of the gallbladder. And I'm thinking that if I'm lucky here, I'm just going to be able to um, elevate this, isolate the cystic duct, and... Um, you know, do the rest of it, what's otherwise a, a normal cholecystectomy. Um, but I, I, I struggled to do that. I really wasn't able to clearly see everything. And I, th I think that was the common bile duct down there, right there. And right about now is when my partners who do this stuff more frequently than me um, came into the room because I asked them to and I'm showing them what I'm looking at. I know that that stone is inside of this here. That's the common bile duct, I believe. And so I'm just, I'm trying to see if I can get behind this thing and do like a completion of a top down, but it just didn't seem to be working for me. So now I'm showing my partners uh, what I've done. I'm showing the bile duct, I'm showing where I took the fistula down. And I'm getting advice to just open uh, the anterior wall of the gallbladder or the remnant. 
and take the stone out. There you can see it, made a little bit of bleeding. That's the stone. See bile freely flowing out now. I can see the orifice of the cystic duct down in there. And the plan at this point was to try to take off as much of the residual gallbladder as we safely could, and then to sew the cystic duct closed from the inside. So I'm just taking off as much of this as I can. Got some bleeding there, probably uh, either the cystic artery or branch of the cystic artery. And again, I'm just trying to take as much of this off as I possibly can. That's the orifice there. Right there. And so now I want to see if there's anything I can do with this fundus to manipulate it now that the um, stone is out. And it actually seems to be lifting for me. So I'm thinking of just taking some of this wall off here. But I all of a sudden feel like I'm seeing the gallbladder a lot better now. And maybe if I keep on working on this, I can get myself towards the back and the true cystic duct. You can see the cystic artery there, right there, right there. I just burned the cut edge of it on the top of the cut edge of the gallbladder. And so I'm seeing if I could kind of get behind this like a normal, you know, gallbladder dissection and see if I can find the cystic duct. I just made the uh, artery bleed again. And in my mind, I'm thinking to myself, you know, maybe I can get there. But then I'm also thinking it's it's so posterior. It's sitting right on the, the common bile duct. It, it almost, you know... It, it just seemed really dangerous to get back there. And so I decided to abort that again in just a moment. And what I am going to do, though, in order to take this part of the wall off, is I'm going to isolate the artery and clip it. So I'm just going to take the rest of this wall back to the artery. Starting here, that's the artery. I was trying to make a window behind the artery, but it was so fused into the wall that I couldn't even do that. And so this is where I'm just taking the rest of the wall back to the artery itself. Not without making some bleeding first. But there, that's just the residual artery now. And now I'm going to address the bile duct um, or the cystic duct. I chose to use a PDS because that's what I was going to use to repair um, the inner layer for my bowel. Um, you'll see later I actually use a different suture.
but I did a figure of eight. Now we're taking a look. I don't see any bile refluxing back. So I felt okay for now. We'll go after the bowel. I decided to close this in two layers. That's the same two OPDS. I do an inner layer. Go ahead and cinch that down. And then one more in the middle. And then I did a, a second layer with Rio Silk. I went and I looked again. It looks dry, but I pushed on the bile duct and now I'm seeing bile reflux back out. Right there, bile is refluxing back out. So I take the 3 Silk that I had and I'm going to do another stitch. I'm doing an omental patch over my duodenum. And that's the end of the case. I hope you enjoyed.